Freedom, won all the awards. He starts it in 1790. How are you going to tell that story without telling this, right? Okay, so Allen's arguing in this period the white race did not exist, although the plantation bourgeoisie was pushing for extending servitude. They tried to extend servitude on women, on Irish, any vulnerable category they could do it to. Um, but he points out that the plantation bourgeoisie was pushing to extend the servitude, um, uh, but the, um, it wasn't in place at all, hereditary bond servitude or uh, prescriptions, you know, laws against free Africans. And he emphasizes the invention of the white race can in no part be ascribed to demands by European laboring people for privileges. They weren't asking for privileges over African Americans. This is going to be conferred later on. Just watch. And he goes through directly. <coughs> he, he backs this up. Another thing that's important to understand, so you get a picture of this, the English in this period did not have, their main source of labor was coming from England and Ireland because the Dutch controlled the African slave trade. The English did not. They didn't. Have, the Royal African Company, they finally did the English, you know, defeat the Dutch in the Second Dutch War in 1677. They set up the Royal African Company, but it takes 40 years before it's in full swing. So the question is, where is the labor going to come? And still, between 1680 and 1700, of the 30,000 European Americans who came to the Chesapeake region, 24,000 were bond laborers. In that roughly that same period, even though slightly before, only 6,000 African bond laborers come. So they're still basing it, the chattel bond labor, on the European, in this period, they're changing, they're changing, right? So then we have Bacon's Rebellion, I explained that, they kick out the governor, they raise hell, they burn Jamestown. The problem of social control, Allen argues, was solved by invention of the white race. The masses of the European Americans could not be promoted to the petty bourgeoisie. The ruling class don't want to do that. They don't want to give all these benefits. You know, they, they, they want to keep them as low as they can. So they're going to sell them another bill of goods, the white race thing, right? You know? And the, uh, they could still be assigned status, designed specifically to involve them in the social control, control system. This really takes shape beginning in 1705 with the revisal of the laws. The essence of the process was to provide for all European Americans a system of privileges in relation to African Americans. It's codified in law. A new status was to be contrived, white identity, right? And it was to get them to set them at a distance from African Americans, enlist them in support of the plantation capitalist system. The introduction of this counterfeit of social mobility was to reissue long-established common law rights in the form of white privileges. This is a very deep concept. These things are rights in England. In Virginia, they are no longer rights. They're taken away. These are chattel bond servants. Now when they come back, they are extended as racial privileges. This is deep. I, I could give you another example about them. I'm going to do it. You <laughs> Morgan, dean of all these historians, he writes about, you know, in the academy they write about the American paradox. And he goes, well, gee, it's, you know, it's a paradox, right? We've got all these great liberties, but it's built on slavery, right? He goes, you know, all these liberties are built on slavery. Allen stands that on its head. And, and he says, it's only by extending what were liberties as privileges that we can develop the system of slavery that we can maintain, right? Very deep. All right. So laws against free African Americans. Then what they're doing, what they start doing, part of the racial privileges is to intensify the laws against African Americans. So if African Americans were forbidden to hold any office, to being a witness, no more Elizabeth Keys going to court, right? Um, uh, if you raised your hand, you're subject to whipping, uh, excluded from the militia, really white slave patrols that would develop, forbidding African Americans possessing a gun. Uh, couldn't own European bond laborers. Free women were titable. Titable meant you'd be taxed. Taxes had to be paid on you. That was uh, usually for the males and now Negro women. Right? Propagandizing people in white supremacism. This is the way they did it back in their day. The main way they propagandized people. Church doors and um, uh, courthouse doors, right? And they, they put in, they're posting the laws. General public was regularly and systematically subjected to white supremacist agitation. 1723 was a key law, very key. In 1720, they passed an act providing that no free Negro, mulatto, or Indian whatsoever shall have any vote in the election. 
in England they didn't understand this. Because England's got Barbados and Jamaica, you know, where Af people of African descent play roles. You own property, you get rights, you know, certain rights. They write to the governor, the governor of Virginia, William Gooch, and they say, well, what are you doing here? We don't understand this. How come free people don't have these rights? And Gooch writes back to them and he explains, we did it to fix a perpetual brand on free Negroes and mulattoes. Now, what Alan says is, surely that was no unthinking decision. That's a re reference to Winthrop Jordan. You know, the basis of it was a deliberate act by the plantation bourgeoisie. And what it did was repeal an electoral principle that had existed in Virginia for more than a century. For over 100 years in Virginia, African Americans, if they had the property quality, they could vote. It's taken away. All right. Why the exclusion of free African Americans? This is deep, and again, I'm appealing to the artist in the crowd, right? Um, the real reason for the prescriptions against the free African Americans is not only extending the privileges to the European Americans, but it's that it's distinguishing them, you know, from African Americans. So the exclusion of free African Americans was a corollary of the establishment of white identity. Act of 1723 takes away the right of self-defense much more formally, and that's crucial because then it, it, it was informed by the principle any European, any European male could assume familiarity with any African American woman, right? Laborers were not promoted out of their class, and Alan goes through a good statistical study. This takes on that Morgan argument that there were too few free poor in America. No, they're all over the place. And Alan backs it up using statistics from these very good historians, right? About 60% were not owners of laborers. They were put in competition, and they couldn't compete with the employees of bond labor, right? So Alan argues to white, about five more slides. White race is social control formation. Uh, with, uh, it's distinguishing characteristics, including the participation of the European American laborers. Uh, it was designed to maintain a system of racial oppression. In time, this white control system begun in Virginia and Maryland would serve as a model and move south. Virginia was the mo uh, mo model, a model plantation economy. Seven of the first, it set the pattern. Seven of the first 12 presidents come from Virginia, right? In sum, go back to Hubert Harrison. Did somebody find it? Oh, good. Hubert Harrison. Remember the insights of Hubert Harrison. Politically, the Negro is a touchstone of the modern democratic idea. True democracy and equality implies a revolution to start the they even think of. Remember from Allen, white supremacy reinforced by white skin privileges had been the main retardant of working class consciousness. Remember the lessons of the three previous crises. The key to defeat was turns to white supremacy. Uh, by fostering white skin privileges. The most vulnerable point, it's what the ruling class relies on. It's what we gotta take them on and beat them on. Remember the five stage cycle? We know as, as conditions get worse, there's gonna be efforts to come together, and we know what they're gonna try and defeat us with, right? And crucial importance, at all struggle, at all st uh, stages of this uh, cycle, you struggle, but you know what's coming, and you gotta be ready, and you gotta beat them back. And remember, the white race was created, has been maintained as a ruling class social control formation. It has been the principal historic guarantor of ruling class domination in the United States. Efforts at radical social change in the U.S. should understand and reflect the centrality of the struggle against white supremacy. Well, I, I did want to open it up sure. if yeah, you sure. did have any questions. Yeah, and there, there are some books there, people don't. So yeah, if there are any questions, we have a few minutes sure. for Q&A. Awesome. Yes. Um, so if Alan said he was not white, did he reclassify himself as Yeah, I, I, I tried to sort of, he said he's struggling to be human, you know, and uh, if anything, he could be, you know, he's probably one of the European Americans or something like that. Um, and I don't know about you, but I get I get from the census and read Alan's article on the census in Hispanic category. But I get the census that when they ask me to define my race, I'm going to let me give you a little more background. You can have in 1912. He's struggling. He tries to push the Socialist Party and much broader in society. He wants Negro uh, with a capital N as opposed to other phrases, right? You know, the epithet and Negro is a small N. And he does that to pose a challenge to white supremacy. I think what Alan's trying to do is pose a 
So Alan, yeah, Alan, Alan doesn't, he, he says, you know, at first I was a little startled by that, you know, but I've been living with it a long time now. And um, so 